advisors. That's a pretty bad accusation to make. I'm in charge of hiring. I'm a police officer. So, you know, you, you guys recommend what you want and, and I'm all for whatever you recommend, but I just don't understand where the hatred comes for, for your own police department. We can do things better, we, we can, I'm trying. But that meeting last week was nothing less than awful, in my opinion, the last part of it. You're, you're comparing us to people who murdered 10 million people of the Jewish faith. I, I don't even know what to say to that or, or why, or if you even want us here anymore. And you don't have to answer today. Um, no, you don't have to answer at all. It's just, it was hard to watch. And I feel that I can come here and talk to you guys about my feelings because I feel this is a safe space and that you guys have made it that way for me. And I've tried to make it that way for you. And I've tried to answer all the questions, but if there's such a hatred for us, Beaverton police, I'm not talking about nationally. There are some messed up things that go on out there for police. Police officers do some messed up things. So do doctors, so do lawyers. You know, I, I just don't know how to, that's not even defend. I don't even know how to sit through meetings like that and, and come away with thinking, I don't even wanna be a police officer anymore. And maybe that's the goal of some people in the committee is to make police officers who take the oath and the honor of preserving and protecting human life and do good things every day to make them hate themselves or not want to do their job, that's fine. But, um, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say my piece and, um, and uh, I thought a lot about this since Monday and, um, and I'm gonna leave the meeting and, and, and please go forward and, and I don't wanna put a damper on anything, but um, that's where I'm at. And you guys can reach out to Paulo if you choose or if you don't, that's fine. Um, but I just, it's disheartening. I, I came with an open mind and I'll fix whatever things you bring to me that are specific to Beaverton, I'll do my best. But um, I just felt a lot of hate at that last meeting. And I think it, it just wasn't productive. It's not productive for me. It's not productive for Lieutenant Sellingworth or Captain Wandell or any other officer to have to sit through that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna sign off now and, um, and, and thank you for letting me um, join in and, and thank you for welcoming me to these meetings. I really, really, truly have enjoyed my time with you guys. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Chief Roshan. Um, I'm gonna reach out. Uh, I think I have your contact information, but I'm gonna okay. get in touch with you in okay. the next couple of days because I just wanna talk more offline a little bit. Okay. Um, let's connect. You'll hear from me. And if you don't, okay. I'll tell, I'll poke Paolo. Okay. All right. Thanks, you guys. Have a good rest Thank of your you. day. Um, you there was that. one person asking if, the, oh, well, she's gone. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> Sorry, Kevin. Um, I think, uh, I think Neil had something he wanted to say. Oh. Did Officer Stonworth, did you have something you wanted to say? Did you unmuted? Oh. I can't hear you. Paul, I think you have to adjust it so that he can be heard. You're a panelist and it says you're unmuted. Uh, here, I'm going to mute you and then unmute you. And then you let's go. see. Okay, I just said ask to unmute. So hopefully it gives you that option. Okay. Ah. Check your microphone. Yeah, it might be the microphone settings. Do you want to give me a call, Lieutenant? Maybe I could put it on speakerphone. Let's see.
I think I'm calling you. No? Interesting. Okay. Go ahead. It's going to have clip reverb. Got it. Um, I think we'll go ahead and we'll just wait uh, for folks to reach out offline. Um, and that'll be fine. All right, thank you, then. High five. Okay, he was just letting me know that the chief is right next to him. Do we want to do this kind of, uh, you know, uh, talking I through the mic thing? It's looking like we'll go ahead and just move on. Um, all good, Nathan? Okay, cool. Just before we go ahead and get started, um, we don't have quorum. Uh, we have enough, and according to the invite, we had enough. I just text Kathy um, and Lisa let me know that she can't make it. So uh, yeah, I just text Kathy. Um, I'll go ahead and put myself on mute and stop my video. If y'all wanna go ahead and start talking and I'll try to listen to both and I'll give Kathy a call so we could jump okay, in. Okay, thanks, Paulo. Um. Dory, oh. do you mind leading us off with kind of purpose for today? Yes, let me write down the time. Um, so the purpose today was to finalize the recommendations that will be presented to the city council on the 26th of this month. And according to our calendar, we were gonna finish this in December. So we're a little run over. And so the last three things that we were talking about at the end of last meeting that we got rushed were SROs, community engagement, and eight can't wait. We got through eight can't wait and SROs, but I think that Spencer had more to say about that. And then we were just starting community engagement when I think it was Dory observed, I think we're rushing. <laughs> so we stopped. Um, and I'm wondering if Dory, since you're feeling better and you're back in the document, um, well, I also wanted to explain the way I put this document together. When I took this class in uh, getting ready for law school, there are no judges that'll read 22 pages. If you can't make it in one page, you, you don't know it well enough. So what I did is behind the title page, I put a short synopsis with no comments of what our recommendations were, then the table of contents, and then behind the table of contents, all of the stuff. Dory was right. It's good to include all of the things we talked about and went through and tried to discuss and tried to come to consensus on. So that's why everything is included behind the table of contents. So that's where we left off. Uh Point of information, I guess. Um, just because I know that sometimes I can misspeak and get passionate. I want to make sure that, does anyone recall me in the last meeting going beyond what my normal comments are and, that, and actually making like a Nazi comparison? Because if I did, I, I'll need to apologize immediately. I don't that believe- That was me. I went through and I okay. apologize. I don't mean actually Nazis. I'm yeah, I, sensitive. I, okay, having okay. survived a Nazi, an actual card carrying Nazi that I was married to, I'm watching the insurrection on the United States Capitol and the Confederate flag flying in the Capitol. Okay. No, so, I, I just want to make sure that I didn't somehow. No, that was me. Far beyond the, yeah. I wanted to make sure it wasn't me that went beyond the bounds. Yeah, that was, I apologize. And what I apologize for is um, well, 
I don't want to offend anyone. I really don't. And I don't want to hurt anyone. And when I say Nazi, I don't necessarily mean like my ex-husband with a card carrying Nazi SS uniform kind of thing. The challenge is that if you list all of the characteristics of Nazi, it's the same thing as just saying it. Yeah, Joy, jo I, would, I would stop there before. <laughs> So if I may just ask us to take a minute as humans and just quiet our bodies, quiet ourselves and take some breaths because there is an injury spoken from the chief who said that um, for the folks that are just arriving, the chief was really um, personally impacted. She said by being thought of as a Nazi. Um, and I can tell Lieutenant Stallingworth was as well. So let's just take some breaths, consider the impact of that. And then say, if you would like to talk to them offline. Paulo is our resource for doing that. Um, I got sick last week and I'm gonna say, Mercy, I was planning to give you a call too and did get not get a chance to give you a call or um, Lieutenant Stallingworth because I felt that he deserved a call as well because I saw the expression on his face during the end of the meeting. Um, so I will take care of that. Mercy, you and I can talk offline about when we can talk. Um, and I will also reach out to um, which is stolen with as I had planned, but each of us has to choose in our own way how we are going to make repair, right? If we think that we need to make repair, that's one thing. If you feel like you need to reach out, please do so through Paulo. So what I'd Thank like you is so to much, do, Doria. may I do this one, one more thing, Laurel? I want us to just close our eyes for a minute and visualize the unimaginable, right? When we think of community safety in Beaverton, what do you see? What do you see when you walk around the streets? What do you see when you're standing in the park? What do you see when you see a group of people in the community who are protesting? What do you see when you see somebody in mental health crisis, what does the help that that person is being provided look like? Sit in those pieces that you're visualizing. And now if you could bring them to us because they will help us in the work that we're about to do. So when you're ready, open your eyes, take a deep breath in, let it all out. And I turn it over to Laurel and Joy who will lead us forward. That was perfect. Thank you so much, Dory. We needed that. Um, I'm rechecking our... Uh, I wanted to make sure... It looks like we're all looking at the same document now. I wanted to ask if people want me to screen share that. Will that be helpful or will that make it... Go or, ahead, Dory. And as the typist, can I screen share? Because that'll make it yes. super easy. Yes. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. Um, junk that I have up here, but here we go. That's fine. I just, this is, uh, I, in coming to this meeting, I was, um, I, I had a moment where I was explaining to the other people I was meeting with while I was leaving early. And I was like, yeah, we're going to go try to wrap up six months of work in an hour. Wish me luck. And um, when I look at this document, especially enjoy the way you rearranged it with that like pricey at the beginning, I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess like we could wrap up six months of work in an hour. That's awesome. 
Um, so I just want to say thank you to everybody who's who's gotten us to this point because it's pretty fantastic. Um, I'm going to do very little talking, and I want to actually turn it over to Joy because I feel like you, um, I feel like you're going to lead this better than I am. So I'm just going to be here as the like, I don't know, almost like the referee maybe. Okay. Before it, Joy. All right. <laughs> well. I know from my conversation earlier today with Spencer, he had something to say about SROs. So they're first on the list. We can start with Spencer. What do you have to say? Thanks. Um, can I just say real quick, again, just, I, I don't know if this was mentioned when I was on the phone earlier, so sorry, just the goals of this meeting here. Was that already talked about? I don't know. Wrap, wrap this yeah. up and get it ready for the 26th. And I'll have it approved. Yes. Yeah. Please go on. Okay. And SROs, which was uh, in the final recommendation page, which is page one. That would be item five. Sorry, give me just a second. Let's go to the very top of the document. Yeah. Right, but did okay, as you wish. <laughs> so, um, SROs, we voted at the end uh, after all the conversations and leading the discussion. At the, well, I, I had part of the discussion. We've talked this off and on the entire time. It keeps coming up and it was resolved to remove SROs from the schools would be our recommendation. And so Spencer. Um, thanks. Um, I don't know what our, what the proper thing to do is here. Um, I would have said far, far more um, last week if we had just been by ourselves. Um, I was self-conscious with um, people who weren't on the commission being in the meeting, um, Commissioner and Lieutenant Stellingsworth and you know, whoever else was there. Um, so one question I have is, um, is it possible to have commission only meetings? And that's a conversation we can have some other time. Um, I find myself wondering if I missed the meeting where all the data in opposition to SRO programs was presented. Um, I'm used to seeing research um, that's done by civic organizations or by a civic organization with which I've worked, um, interview people and um, listen to experiences and listen to um, data and information. And um, I've never heard from anyone outside the commission about SROs. Um, I feel as though members of the commission have come to this process with their minds made up about SROs. As I explained last week, um, I've never had a student in, uh, in the Beaverton schools. Um, and when my kids were growing up in Seattle, um, I guess there were SROs in the high schools, but I was never really aware of it. Anyway, I've got a friend, forgive me for, I'm gonna fumble this a bit. I've got a friend who um, works in administration in a high school in Beaverton. And so, because I don't know anything about the program, I ask them um, what their experience has been with SROs. And I'd like to read a bit of what they wrote to me. I've had the privilege of working with three different SROs during my years um, working in the high school. My job puts me on the front line liter literally and figuratively. I've seen just about everything you can imagine come through the front door. Suicide attempts, fights, drug alcohol use, runaways, abuse victims, out of control parents, and more. There have also been a few times when I've been a little too close and have felt personally unsafe. Each and every time we've needed the help of the SRO, they've been there to help. 
never seen them act with anything other than professionalism and compassion. Um, I don't believe our SROs are in the business of supplying the pipeline. In fact, I believe the opposite is true. Sure, there are times when arrests need to be made, but only if there are no other options and certainly with no bias. I've, witnessed our, I've witnessed our officers develop positive relationships with our students, and I believe they've made a difference for many of them in terms of the choices they make. As part of the counseling team, I've also witnessed our SROs working closely with counselors and administrators to help students that may be in danger either at home or at school. Um, so I've been finding myself wondering if the school district indeed, or if the city indeed um, accepts our recommendation to do away with that program, how many high school students won't be protected from abusive parents um, or how many high school, how many students won't have the benefit of an intervention um, if they're contemplating harming themselves? Um, I just, um, I haven't heard from anyone outside this commission what's wrong with SROs. I've never talk to, no, no one has come to the commission to be a witness. And in the absence of witnesses with experience, um, I'm concerned that we're not actually in a position to judge. I'm certainly not, which is why I didn't vote for the, for the recommendation. And it might well be too late to revisit it. Um, but I question the accuracy of our judgment um, and whether it's truly the, uh, the right thing to do for the benefit of our community. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry. I think our chair um, and vice chair would be the ones to address this since they're teachers. Um, I don't, hold on. Um, I see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a list of whose hands I see up in the chat too. Go ahead, Dory. And um, so I wanna respond directly, Spencer, and thank you for raising that. Both points, right? The point about uh, when do we go into session with just us? So people can be comfortable having a back and forth discussion. I've reflected a lot about last week and some of the things that happened, for example, we have brand new people who are diving in their first day, they're looking at these, they're thinking they can make all kinds of changes. We're not at a point, and, and we should have said, we're not at a point where we're gonna make a hundred changes, right? We're at a point where we're finishing up. We are wrapping up this word. The SRO piece, there is a lot of research that shows that SROs negatively impact the experiences of children of color, right? So there's also research that shows that other positions within a school can be more supportive, right? So for example, there are security people at each school. Um, research has shown that those folks that are security people that are there every day, that are there for lunch, see the kids in the morning that have more time to build a relationship tend to be the ones that kids will go to when they have problems. And we're also not imagining what could be, right? So Spencer, I'm gonna tell you where this comes from for me. Um, I have been in shooter situations in various schools and yes, police were very helpful, but they were called to the site. We had a school SRO. We didn't have a relationship with that person nor did our children have a relationship with that person. When those children were dealing with the post-traumatic stress of having been shot at, they went to their teachers. So they didn't necessarily go to the SROs. And the question becomes, what is it that we can imagine that 
the money from the SROs, which is a substantial amount of money, what could that money be used for, right? So there's two parts to the SOR, SRO program in Beaverton. One part is what the city pays to sheriffs and the BPD for SROs. And one part is what the school district pays to invest in those SROs. So with that, um, sorry, Laurel, you can go ahead and call on other folks. No, thank you, Dory. That was awesome. Sabdi, go ahead and then I'm going to jump in. Hi there. So, um, I mean, I'm going to basically echo what Dory was kind of going down and train up. Um, so I, for an age here, you know, I definitely went to high school with SROs. Um, and as a student, I could say, I remember my experience being exactly what Dory said. You know, the, the relationship isn't there. The relationship that we have mostly with our security officers, that's kind of who we went to, that's who we saw on a day-to-day -day basis and we just didn't have a relationship with the SROs, I can kind of see why there's this argument that we're questioning their effectiveness. Also, I would say everything that you just write off on the statement um, that was given to you by your friend or colleague, it plays right into what we're talking about when it comes to police in the community. You know, if we're talking about mental health issues, if we're talking about um, suicide attempts, if we're talking about issues at home, like there are other resources that we can tap into and should be tapping into that isn't the police officer or in a school's case, the SRO to handle those things. You know what I mean? So I feel like the same argument could be made, which is why we're talking about reallocating those resources to other ways to help our schools and our teachers and our students. That was it. Thanks, Bobby. Um, I wanna, uh, echo and star and emphasize everything that both Dory and Sabdi said. And, um, sorry, my mom is texting me. <laughs> um, and I also, I, Spencer, I wanted to give you a couple of just things to ponder, like not rebuttals, not, you know, I don't, that's not how I, I don't, I actually, my brain just doesn't function that way, but two things that I thought while I was listening to what you were saying and that I wanted you to think about. Um, the question I always ask people is what evidence do we have that SROs are doing good? That often that we, we present it as a done deal that like we have to provide evidence for why we should change course. And I would say instead, what evidence do we have that compels us to have armed officers in schools? And when I started looking at it that way, I had a very different, I had a dramatic change in my thoughts on SROs. When I started looking for what evidence can I find that this is a good thing that I should opt in for, for my community. So that's my one question that I want you to ponder. Um, and then the other thing that I just wanted to really emphasize is that there are a lot of opportunities for school leadership, adults, administrators, teachers, but only if they're white teachers um, to provide their thoughts on SROs, the limited opportunities that we give to students and to families tend to not have, um, first of all, are very limited, right? So Spencer, as you're kind of reaching out and finding people to talk to you about SROs, that's who I would focus your, your kind of questioning on is what what opportunities do you have to connect with students and with especially students of color and families of color to get their take on SROs. And that was part of what you said, right? That like you're, you don't have kids currently in the school district. Um, I don't either. I don't get to see the kids in the school district as often as I would like right now. Um, but that's, so that, and that really, and I would put that out, not just for Spencer, but for anybody. And as you're looking for ways to think about SROs, those are the two things that I always tell people to think about. like. What evidence do we have that SROs are good? And what do students have to say? So those are mine. And then let's go to Stephanie. Hi. Yeah, um, I, I wanted to add a little bit more to um, the discussion about SROs. One is that I, I fully accept and recognize that um, the experience of people of color with SROs would be dramatically different and I don't um, pretend to um, understand or even um, try to 
I try to I try to pretend that I have context to understand that it in and that my position is is simply to to listen and learn about that. I'm also fully aware that the school districts and um, the vast majority of um, parents who granted probably are white parents have been supportive of SROs in the school. And my concern is that SROs will probably not be removed from the schools because of our recommendation. But I do have concerns that we're by having the flat recommendation that SROs be removed from schools, we've lost the opportunity to make suggestions about how SROs could Improve. be beneficial to reform or, or approach the situation differently, or we could imagine them in this, the school district differently, or we could imagine them developing relationship or make recommendations in that respect where we're cutting ourselves off completely from any input into something that will probably remain in the school because again the i i work on the school curriculum team for the city of beaverton and my understanding from from them and from um the school board as well as um, our city council and from the police department is, I mean, they think they're doing great. They think they're doing something really beneficial and all of those other entities are in relative agreement with that. And if, if we're just saying they should be gone, I wonder if we're missing our opportunity to influence um, if they are going to be there, um, what, what kind of capacity that they would be serving in. Similarly, you know, it was, I, I honestly, I was very devastated um, by our, our last meeting. So when Chief Groshan expressed that, I, I, I almost felt relieved that she said those things because I was, I too was so devastated after that meeting. I, I thought I, I clearly don't belong on this commission and I, I, don't, I don't believe that I have anything to contribute any longer um, really with the direction that it was going at our last meeting. But, um, but here I am and I, I thought, well, as, as long as I'm um, in this final year, I'll, I'll put in my two cents. And I think we need to be careful as we're eliminating recommendations that we aren't eliminating our voice to imagine something new, imagine a new kind of policing, imagine a new kind of um, interaction. And I'm not, I'm not sure that we're, we're heading in that direction with, with some of what we're doing and some of what we're cutting out. I think we're, we're just cutting out whole aspects of, of our, our voice and of the opportunity to influence and imagine something new. That's a really good, thank you, Stephanie, for that. And that, I, and I would sum that up as like, almost are we, that kind of we need to tread carefully on when will we be writing ourselves out of the conversation, right? And that's, and, and I don't mean like you individually, because I don't want you to write yourself out of the conversation, but like we as each rep. And I think that's a really solid, I think that's a really solid question. Um, let's, Dory, go ahead. Can I leap in here? Because I think there's room and that's what um, we were attempting to create in the document was room for everybody's opinion to be heard, right? As well as coming up with final recommendations. So um, this is what I would suggest as we're also at 340, which gives us 20 minutes to talk about everything. Um, Spencer, you have some strong opinions about where the commission stood and how we felt, right? I think if you can write that up, and Paula, you can tell me if this is okay, we could put that in the comments section that is much longer, right? So we could include that in the comments and I'm gonna um, respectfully disagree. I don't know about you all, but I know for me, I read every sentence of a document that's sent to me when I'm asked to make a decision on it. And that could just be how I operate, but that's how I operate. 
Um, and my impression of our counselors is that they do the same thing. They really, they do really read every word. So that would be my suggestion for Spencer. Stephanie, um, you know, that's how it was written before, right? We were leaving space for the discussion around SROs and we were trying to cultivate that discussion. Once again, I'm gonna say we have people who are new coming in who had very strong opinions and folks who had strong opinions saying, this is where we wanna go. So this is what we voted. So I think we have to leave it in there. Am I correct, everybody? When I think we about- We have a quorum. We can make a new motion. Yep. So we have a quorum. Wait, let Dory, let Dory finish your thought. Um, but I would say, you know, my suggestion would be to respect everybody who is with us on Wednesday and everybody who is not here now to leave this and then to also add to the comments the other potential ideas, right? It's not saying that that's a proposal, but here are the comments of other ways to go so that you're giving them room to do what they might need to do. So do we want to say that we didn't come to a consensus on SROs in our recommendations? and see the comments. I think Cameron had something he wanted to add. Go ahead, Cameron. Yeah, so we vote. So saying we didn't come to a consensus doesn't really work. Um, so I would propose that we keep the recommendation of eliminating it for SRs, but then offer in the alternative uh, doing a study or basically taking the comments that we've already had and offering that. So basically we do, we do one, so recommendation one, oh, but nice. recommendation two in the alternative is this. I think that would take into account most of the problems that we're having. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe uh, part of it is the study which would take into Spencer's account or Spencer's concerns. Mm -hmm. and, Sorry, can you scroll just so that on your screen, can you scroll so those other, those like alternative SRO recommendations are up? Sorry, go ahead, Cameron. Page 17. Um, it's still going to be there, Joy, because I just cut it, I cut and pasted it into the original document. I haven't, I didn't realize that you had made all those changes. Okay. Well, I didn't change anything that was put together before. I just added the pages on. Okay. That's what I'm going to okay. say. Then we're good. Because I was going to go through and go through and do the comparison. Every Ask. word was in there. I didn't take anything out. Actually, since we have quorum, I'm actually just going to go ahead and motion for that. Oh, uh, motion. We add that we add uh, section five back. Well, that we add. We add. Uh, let's see how we add as oh. recommendation two under our recommendations for SRO programs in the alternative consider in the alternative study the effectiveness of SRO programs in schools in Beaverton schools. So that was one of the so sorry why I was trying to see if we could get um You're get like, that up on the screen is some of the uh, like <laughs> anyway is definitely here. Um, okay, so because there was. Here it is, number E. Yeah, I guess what I'm, so Cameron, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that we don't, um, there we go. So we had, yes, we had had those as some of the original recommendations. And so maybe instead of adding a new one, uh, would you be making a motion instead to restore one of the ones that we omitted? Does that make sense? Here, let me go to this one. There's no second, so it isn't on there yet. Let me double go down there. And then, yeah. Okay, so I would, so I would instead add two, recommendation two, engage in the following process of 2A, B, 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D, 2D. Oh. I didn't follow that. Okay, engage in the following. I've got you. Engage in the following process. Yeah, and then it would restore. So it would restore to all of these recommendations here, A through B, as an alternative 
to elimination of the SRO programs. SRO pro elimination of the program remains our number one recommendation, but in the alternative, consider these. Uh, I, guess it, I second it, that motion. Some people, some people, you know, it just depends on I don't know, am I allowed to second things I did? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't make it, so yeah. That's right. Can I jump um, in before I turn it over to Spencer, just a logistical thing? So, yes, please. Um, yeah. Dory, you haven't technically changed anything on the doc yet, right? No, what I did was I cut and pasted Joy's first two pages, the, the table of contents and her summary page. That's what I cut. Okay. And then Joy, I my understanding is from that Google doc, or from that document, you also changed formatting throughout the document? I just cleaned it up. Okay. I, I so, didn't move anything. I didn't take out a dot. I just formatted. Okay. So, okay. I, I'm going to start over here. Maybe if y'all want, since I have that document, what if we do this? What if I share screen instead, since no additions have been actually made? She um, did make additions, though. She added the one six twenty one conversation to her document. Okay. Go ahead, well, Kyla. Well, no, I'm just making sure that, you know, when I see these, all those cleanups and everything that you did before, Joy, it sounds like they wouldn't be included then. Because um, there were some formatting edits you did as well, right? I would do it again. It's fine. Okay. 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 I'm good. I'll stop. <laughs> Thank you, Joy. Um, Spencer? Are we ready to vote? Yes, there's been a second. I think we are. Joy, did you want to call for a vote? Thank you. Okay, let's, the, the question, we'll call the question yes. is to vote on the motion to, if, to amend our previous, no. There's been a motion to add that is to restore the SRO, to restore. To, sure. To it's not to restore, it's to say this is our first recommendation, but if you're keeping an SRO, then this is what we would recommend for an SRO. Yes. Cameron. Yeah, I'm definitely in favor of my emotion. <laughs> Spencer, I believe that that's a hand for a question and not a hand for. Uh... No, we're voting. He's voting. Okay. Spencer, are you voting? Yeah. Oh, okay. So one more time, I'm sorry, so I can capture the language. I'm not going to take the time to type it into the doc, but I am writing it down and then I will type it into the doc. So Cameron, your language that I have, it reads, if recommendation one is not undertaken, in the alternative, look at the processes A through E. Is that That's, correct? That is a sufficient explanation. OK. Forgive me. I did have a question or a comment. OK. Um, I wasn't, I think what I was objecting, what I've been object, trying to object to as much as anything else is our process. Mm -hmm. um, as a commissioner, the fact is, is I simply don't know enough to make an informed decision about SROs. And that's what I probably should have tried to express more clearly. Um, we actually haven't, as a commission, researched the issue. Um, I know that- I mean, I have, but- Exactly, you have, but there's been no evidence or report or um, data or you know um, information presented to the commission um, that informs a decision, as far as I can tell. I know that a, a number of people have informed themselves um, or have come into this whole process being informed. Um, I am not. And um, if that's my fault, then I'll step up and say that's my fault. If there were opportunities during the last six months, if, if um, uh, materials have been presented to us 
that I failed to um, read, then that's on me and I apologize. But I just don't remember that happening. So. So Spencer, Spencer. do we wanna make note of that? So for me, it's important once again, trying to capture everybody's thoughts. Do we want to make note of that in this document somewhere? Spencer, do you want me to write that? So far, this is what I have. No evidence or reports of data um, that informs the commission were reviewed. Well, I don't, I'm not sure that that's true. I remember speaking to, I don't, what is it? But that's Spencer's chairs that, that, so that my that, question is, is it if it's Spencer's truth, does Spencer yeah. want it recorded? That's what I'm asking very directly. So Spencer, do you want that truth that you were speaking for yourself to be recorded? Well, it's a, pro it's a, for me, it's a, it, it's, it's a process issue and I may have misunderstood. I think I clearly misunderstood um, how this whole process was going to work. Um, and if we could put off our report for two months, I think it would be a bit, I think we could do a better job. But if we're committed, if we've been required to submit the report um, next week, then so be it. And we have to go forward. I totally accept that. Um, the only research that I personally did was um, in learning about um, a community oversight. Um, and how different departments around the country or how different communities around the country, country um, uh, institute it, how it works, um, whether it's effective, um, what it takes to make it effective and so on. Um, hey Spencer, I really hate to be this person. We have seven minutes left in this meeting. Okay, I have to leave on time. Um, so I, I yeah. think the answer, so the, the Dory's question was, in order for you to have your voice represented, is there a change that you need us to make to this document? I think having um, the language about um, doing uh, research and review of the program, um, if it's going to continue, I think that okay. covers Cool, that. thank you. Um, and then, Mercy has her. Uh, yeah, pa Paolo, the the further study is one of those bullet points. It's it's like it's E. It's actually embedded in a few of them. Um, and then I want to pull us back. So we have a vote on the floor that we haven't actually completed. So we had a motion. We had a second. We had a call for a vote. I don't think we've actually counted the votes. Do we want to pause that, hear from Mercy, and then wrap that vote up? Let's do that. So let's let's put a pause on that. Mercy, go ahead, and then we'll we'll close out that vote. Hey, thank you. It's just gonna be real quick. Uh, before I say what I want to say, the war hatred that was mentioned when Chief was talking is very strong. If they want to understand the way I feel and why I speak the way I speak, I'm open to meet with them. That's what I can say about that. But on the ground of SRO, I personally have not made any contribution to that because I don't have any experience with it. And I don't know it because I don't have kids in school. But that does not mean that people who have experience with it that know why they want to eliminate them, that does not mean we can't listen to them. They have all right to bring it up. So I think the whole thing about SRO, if somebody feel that they should go because of their experience, we need to listen to them. And that's how I wanted to say. Mercy. Um, are we okay then for me to steer us back toward wrapping up this vote? Okay, so um, the motion is. Oh, we are going for to the question. We've had okay. discussion. All in favor. Thank you. Are we raising our hand or are we just saying yes, favor? I think we're raising our hands. Okay, I'm counting for you. <laughs> One, two. Uh, Joy, is your hand? No, not I'm okay. standing. One. Two, three, four. 
Oh, the cameras keep moving around. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's five. And opposed? Can I vote on this? You can. Are you opposed. for or against? For or against? Against. Okay. One against. So five, four, one against, and then I think that's one opposed. Abstention. One abstention. Or, yeah, two abstentions. I abstain. Two abstentions? Two abstain. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. So I just want to read it back to make sure I have the language. Mm. If recommendation one is not taken in the alternative, if recommendation one is not taken, engage in the process outlined in A through E. Great. Perfect. Okay. So you're putting that in? I will, but I'm not going to do it right now because we have three minutes. Right. Okay. We, uh, the next point was a can't wait, which we voted to adopt. I think we're done there. Unless there's discussion, we only have two minutes. And the only the discussion point was if we wanted to just move it higher in the document. Oh. Right. Which I, I don't know. Sure. I'm okay with it the way it is if that allows us to move, continue to move forward. Exactly. Okay. And yeah. uh, community engagement. Do we want to recommend all that reaching out to the police, community engagement? So just to recap, last time we struck that section, we did. Um, but if you read in the other sections, one of the things we recommend is um, that the city counselors engage with the work that Ellen Wyoming Deloy presented to them about having authentic conversation with the community. And I think we may have even said um, the police department as well. So I think the the point that, I, that I'm going to summarize, and we can see if this makes sense, Cameron and Anjabin, who is not here, so I am not speaking for her, I'm remembering what we all, what was written, said, and um, they said that reaching out to communities of color who already are feeling marginalized and perhaps threatened by the police is not the best way to connect with communities of color to build authentic relationship. So that's why we struck that section. That was some of the, the thinking that helped us to strike that section. Spencer, I know you had voiced in that same, those same comments, then how are you supposed to reach out to communities of color? Did you wanna talk a little bit more about that, Spencer, what you were thinking there? I wish we could, um, or that I, I wish that people smarter than I am um, and more experienced had a solution. Um, I just, I, I, I hate to see us um, cutting off potential avenues um, of communication. It doesn't, um, I think it, Stephanie was earlier reflecting that um, if we just shut something down then there's no opportunity to improve it. So look at the language under final recommendation. So let's all just examine that and I'll read it out loud. Connecting with community members. Upon further reflection and discussion during the January 2021 HRAC meeting. Is it okay if I put HRAC in there? Yeah. Matt? yeah. HRAC meeting. And in light of the day's insurrection, I don't know if that was considered during the meeting, right? If that, you know, if you were considering one day, but that's my editorial comment. This section- We can take it out. We can take it out. I'm, I'm not married to it. You have a permission to hate it. This, I'll, I'll leave it in for now until folks decide. This section was voted removed by the commission. It is included here to reflect the commission's efforts to address the issue. I think you're right, Dory, that all of this, we really worked on stuff and just because it's not reflected here, 
Does it mean we didn't spend considerable effort on trying to come to something? What happened in part of that discussion was, was a questioning of even if police should be given the option of, of education, of um, learning de-escalation task tactics, learning about implicit bias, um, if, if we should even provide resources or training to them in any form, which um, I was I was disturbed by. And um, I, I feel like if, at, at, at the very least, I want to make sure that, you know, in, in those, that we're leaving those sections in, and I respect the commission's um, decision that they're going to remove that, all of those recommendations for the police, but um, I, I think it should be noted that at least a couple of commissioners, my, myself at least, um, felt really strongly that um, connecting with the community or at least making strides in that direction as we reimagine what the police force will look like. And because that's that's really what we're in the process of doing is reimagining an entire societal um, shift that that we that we honor that at least you know some of us or some at least I feel I should only speak for myself um, that that I feel strongly that there's that that's a part of the process is that. We, we have to provide options or avenues to explore um, for the police department to connect with the community in a healthy way. And I, I understand that some, um, some commissioners believe that that's impossible for the police to connect in a healthy way. I, I, I recognize and I honor that. I just, um, I don't believe that's true. You disagree, hear you. Thank you, Stephanie. I disagree, that's, that's yeah, proper way to say that. I think Laurel had to leave, or maybe she's on the Laurel Cameron. Laurel I saw um, Cameron's hand up. Cameron, what did you want to add? So, because I was the one pushing <laughs> to remove those largely, uh, I feel like I should respond. So, I would love to see, you know, the police, I would love to see the police communicate in a safe and effective way with community members, I believe that our, our police department, so Beaverton Police Department in particular, can. I believe in them. Uh, they seem, frankly, like good people. Mm -hmm. um, I just think it is remiss to not acknowledge that mm -hmm. at the current moment, for, for many people, interacting with the police is dangerous in its in, is an inherently dangerous activity. Um, do I believe that many of our police officers here could do it safely? Yes. Do I believe that many of our community members here could do it safely? Yes. Um, that was just that was the thrust behind my beyond, behind my move to remove those particular paragraphs. Um, now. If we, if overall we feel that we should be more hopeful, I'm all for it. I am by nature cynical and pessimistic, so maybe, maybe that's just on me. But if we'd like to be more hopeful, I'm, I would not be opposed. But Cameron, I really honor your perspective, and I, I, I want to emphasize that my response to that was. Um, actually not, not in reference to anything that you were saying. Again, my concern is that if we do not provide the police department with healthy ideas or avenues in order to connect with the community, um, we're losing our voice in that development. And I'm, I'm concerned that we're, we're cutting out our voice once again, because the police department isn't going away, um, at least this year. Um, so so when, if we, if we can begin that process of reimagining them, but what what their interaction would look like in a healthy way, um, I want to be a part of the beginning of that evolution and where it lands. I, I don't know. I really I don't know where the evolution of police ultimately lands in a healthy society. I I don't pretend to imagine that, but but I doubt that cutting off conversation is. But but please understand, Cameron, my, my reaction to this actually 
wasn't wasn't in any way directed towards you know, your concerns, and I, I feel like you create a healthy counterbalance in a lot of ways. Well, thank you, Stephanie and Cameron. I have an idea, and I'd love everybody else's input as well. Um, but since the two of you are speaking, I, I would like to make a suggestion. If we phrase this as upon further reflection discussion to the January 2021st ATRAC meeting and take out that part about the insurrection because that's not necessarily applicable to this situation, that might speak to where we were in, as where some people were in, in, in their emotions on that day. This section was voted removed by the commission. We understand, and do we wanna add there is complexity in building authentic relationships with communities of color. And Ellen Wyoming Deloy addressed that in her work, right? I don't know if everyone took a look at it, like but that. she really addressed it. I like it. So I'm gonna make that motion. I move that we strike and in light of the insurrection, And I'm going to do it on here, and I can always return it, so don't don't get mad at me. Um, upon further reflection discussion during the January 2021 HRAC meeting, this section was voted removed by the commission because of the complexity of creating authentic relationships. Motion to amend. Creating authentic relationships and I might be spelling things wrong and I'll go back and fix it. Relationships. Can folks see Dory's um what she's writing? Yeah. Are you yeah. Able to oh, okay we're so watching we're yeah okay and we recommend referring to Ellen Wyoming Deloy's work as a starting point. I like that a lot. For um, examining how to build authentic relationships. With communities of color? Yes. With community members of color. Sorry, wordsmithing. About the BIPOC community or BIPOC, and then take out it is included. You could say our discussion is our our work, our 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 original work. Yeah, our draft work. Our is draft work. Draft work is included, included here in this in this document. Yeah, cool. Then I can point out the page. Yeah, insert page number. Is it depends that... on how it formats at the end. It was yeah. seventeen. So I'm just going to do a quick formatting thing. That's my motion. Does anybody second? It? I'll second that. Motion to amend. So Kathy, are you are you voting right now? Or comment. Is it discussion time? Yeah, isn't it's discussion time? You you can yeah, you can make a comment now. Oh, okay. Um I I was just wondering if um, the city council would look at is wanting specific solid recommendations or if not knowing us uh, giving them things where we really don't know the recommendation, yeah. That's a question for you guys. Um, Kathy, I'm gonna say my impression. My impression is that nobody in this group, um, unless I don't know about past histories, um, is an expert on policing. 
right? So the I think the city council wanted to engage, and I believe the chief did as well in thought partnership to have others who don't have that same background to have diversity of thought present to have these discussions. So these recommendations don't have to be um, PhD level recommendations where we've done you know a ton of research. It's as members of the community appointed to a track representing the community, here's what we would recommend. Does that help? Okay. And people let me know if I, if you think yeah, I'm inaccurate in my summation. That feels accurate to me. Thanks, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. And based on this with the 26th, this is also a next step to the next step of leaning also on council and, and leadership on directions um, and next steps for or possibly us or not us. So I know other discussion. Um, just one more okay. comment. Oh, Cameron first. Uh, okay. Um, so I would motion. To, so I like it, but I would motion to amend uh, and rec inner uh, and recognizing the inherent danger police interaction poses to certain community members. I did put that in the discussion in the back. Okay, in that case, uh, I'll withdraw. And, and move Cameron, to there's also information data around that in the opening section too. Okay. And and the likelihood of black people dying at the hands of police when they're um, stopped. Okay. As long as that's recognized, I will withdraw. <laughs> And then move to previous question. Are we ready to vote? Uh, I just want to, to second what Dory said. In one of the city council meetings, um, one of the council members said that they would take the recommendations and do further study. So, so I think that's good. Thank you, Dory, for reminding. Thank you, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cameron, is your hand still up or is this? Nope. Okay, got it. Cool. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. Sounds like we need to finish. Did we finish the vote for the first one? We haven't voted yet. Voting. We were in discussion, right? Are we ready? Any more discussion? All right. All in favor? Can um, folks use the, uh, unless literally everyone's in favor, so if, what? if folks can please use the raise hand function. The raise hand function. Yep, I don't know where votes. that is. I do not um, know where that is. For now, I, I think I saw you raise your hand, Joy, so I'll just say yes, okay? So. And I can't raise my hand right now, Paula, because I'm sharing screen. Uh, just hit Alt-Y. Oh, Alt-Y, okay. thank you. It looks like everybody, everybody, everybody raise their hand. Opposed. Anybody opposed? Uh, da, 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 da. I think those were still left over hands raised. So yeah, no, po no oppositions. Any abstention? Okay. None. That was the three. So I'll hand it back to Dory. Uh, or sure. That was the three. So what it sounds like needs to happen next is Dory made some additions that, um, <coughs> excuse me, that still need to be on there because I believe Dory, they're on your paper, but not here. Um, and so I think maybe, would it be helpful also to see the notes that Joy was taking? Um, yes. Okay. So I, I know Paula, we went back and forth in the chat, but I, I think I can save the chat for the ones that you added. Um, just don't hang up, Paula. Yep. <laughs> yep. Time yep. to get up. So I can save those notes. I do mm -hmm. see two comments from Laurel, just about formatting on the screen. Can everybody see those right now? 
It's a little small. Is there a zoom button or like a yeah. Yeah, we can make it way bigger? If, if, if everyone's cool with it and it's just me, then that's just that's cool. Make it way bigger. I suggest we move this section up. Uh, I suggest we move the section up and make it the top first recommendation. So the eight can't wait recommendation or the policy policies come first. Those recommendations. I, I think heard my name <laughs> sprinting in from the other room. Um, that was my only suggestion was let's move the policy to the top just because that seemed like that had more of the um, like punchy ones, I guess. Those seem bigger, but that's and that's purely based on um, trying to capture some of the comments at the last meeting and between the last meeting. And then the preamble from the September 2nd meeting, that's in another section. Laurel was also suggesting just taking that out so this stays as a clean one pager. I think that's what you were thinking. Yes, exactly. Like, let's make this just pure. These are the recommendations and then all of the commentaries and addendum. I just sent you the notes from right now. Oh. I, <laughs> did you just send me the notes? Yes. You know? Email? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Yep, just came through. Okay. So, so I think for the next steps then, um, that I think it's going to be Dory, Joy, and I working together uh, to do that. But it looks like as it sits now, um, how this is, we, y'all adopt this and it's official, how this document is. I don't know if you need to do an additional vote for all of it. It's not, I don't think you do anymore. Um, but it looks like it's good. And it's just gonna be, yes, y'all adopt this after the after Dory makes the additions and then uh, Joy will do some of the cleanup and then I'll figure out how I could support in between. I'm happy to proofread. And mm -hmm. then I know there were two people that I wanted, I'm glad they're here, Mercy and Spencer. If I can talk to you afterwards, if you look through the doc, you may have seen some places where I had questions and um, it'll take five minutes. There's one other thing I was going to, I'm going to do, and I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this. Michael German is quoted a few times in here. And so I am going to share with Michael German of, are you okay with, you know, being your exact quotes being referenced in here? I'm going to assume he's going to say yes. Uh, but if, let's say he, if he's not, I'll just pull his quotes, but then, you know, uh, everything else will stay referencing that we did work with a uh, outside source being Michael German. May I ask a process question? Yeah. Once we uh, submit the report or present the report to council, um, is that the end of it for our commission or do we then begin to lobby the commission, the city commissioners to enact our recommendations? Yeah, um, that could that could be that's actually up to the commission when we uh, in the future, maybe if we can in the February meeting, I'm hoping that we could do some of the uh, regular beginning of the year stuff where y'all actually vote on what y'all want to do next. Um, now, I don't know that you would see a, 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 another thing that could happen too is council can make recommendations or can advise that maybe a track continue some of this work. But again, that will be up to y'all. Um, can I add to that? You, whether or not you're done with this, but yes. Um, I just wanted to add that that the way you phrase that I think is, is really significant and I want to call attention to it, that part of our February meeting is determining our priorities for the year. And I think that I want us to have an opportunity at that point to say, and this is what we're going to do now. Because I, and part of that is like, I really meant it when I said it at the last meeting. I think some people are like not ready to be done with this. And I think some people are really super duper ready to be done with this. And just from a like chair perspective, I want to see if there are people who are like, yeah, I'm not ready to be done with this. I want to keep doing it. If there's enough energy there, let's create this as a subcommittee. And I want to empower them, like run with this and go. Right. There are subcommittees. And so you could, you know, I know that it was mentioned a lot last time that um, ATRAC have a focus on ADA accessibility or in general ADA uh, accountability at the city. And so it might be that that's one subcommittee and there's another subcommittee to seeing post 
a track inquiry sessions um seeing some we else. may i would make a prediction that we may also um just depending on where the city is at in terms of um if three, they do go move forward with creating an advisory board or commission um right. I would suspect that we would get looped into that conversation again at that point too. Yeah, and also on top of that, we'd, we're not seeing the council priorities yet, like we usually would. Dory, were you raising your hand? And you're on mute, so I'm not sure if you were talking earlier. What happened to my sound? It's working now. You can go off screen share if you'd like. Perfect, thank you all. All right. I can see all of you now. Sorry. Do you think that, was that okay? Did I answer your question? Yeah. Cool. Uh, were, were you mentioning something? I need to go. Is there, um, is there anything else that needs to? Um, you know what? I just want to say something out loud. Mm -hmm. I really appreciated the way this meeting ran because it was calmer people were um, more in the right space. And so I have a wondering, I wonder if when big national events happen, if we should just say, let's not have discussions when folks' emotions are running high. So that's just, I was thinking. It's, it's rhetorical. I don't, I don't need a response now, but just something to think of, that's my learning. Um, and I would suggest that folks check in with each other offline. Is that okay for me to say out loud, Paolo? Um, so reach out if you need to check in with somebody because I'm feeling like I need some check-ins with folks. And so I might reach out to some of you as well. Thank you, Dory. Thanks, Dory. That I want, I'm really glad you said that. I was thinking too about like, I know that I hit the wall um, before the last meeting was over. And so I want to encourage us to reconsider extending the time of meetings because I, I, I see where we were going with that, but like, We've worked so hard on this, let's get it finished. And instead it caused me to realize like, I think those meetings are the length they are for a reason. So that is another thing I would have us ponder just moving forward. And I'm hoping to... moving forward, we don't have national events like that anymore. <laughs> that would get my vote. Right. Let's don't do that anymore. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just going to say it's a friendly purpose. It happens all the time. So we just have to build our resilience on how we deal with those events. Yeah. So let's do it together. Not like that one. Thank you all so much for the additional meeting and staying beyond uh, the extra time also. Um, I'm going to ask Dory and Joy, is it cool if you all stay on for two more minutes? Mm -hmm. Whatever you need. Yeah. I Dory, did you say you're going to call us back or? Mercy, can I call you Mercy and Spencer? That might be easier for us to just call okay. back. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Thanks for letting me talk. Thank you. So Thanks. sorry Thanks. to be late. Oh, just good to have you, Kathy. Welcome. Thanks. See you next month. Thanks, Absolutely. everybody. See you soon. So, Dory, you're going to call? Yeah, I'll give a call. It'll be in a while because I have a, a work call waiting for me right now. No worries. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Spencer. Hi. I'm just going to first off, oh, let me stop recording. Um,